it is highly unlikely in the exam that if testing for irons come up is just going to be a simple question, what is the frame colour for this? It is much, much more likely to be um, a large logic based question where you are given um, a mystery powder or a solution and asked to work out what it is and explaining all of your results. So here is um, a compilation video of all the different tests for irons. I've done videos of all of these in the lab so if you want to go and have a look at me actually doing it you can go and check these videos out but this is just all written out and then we're going to go through a few examples of logic problems. We are going to start by looking at negative ions. Does it form a precipitate when barium chloride is added? If the answer is yes, does this precipitate change when hydrochloric acid is added? If there is no change, it is a sulfate ion. If the precipitate dissolves, is there a gas coming off? If there is no gas, it is a sulfite ion. If there is gas coming off and it tests positive with lime water, it is a carbonate ion. If no precipitate was formed if barium chloride was added, take a new sample and does it form precipitate with silver nitrate? If it does form a precipitate, is this precipitate soluble in ammonia? If it is soluble in dilute ammonia, it is a chloride ion. If it is soluble in concentrated ammonia, it is a bromide ion. And if it is soluble, if it is not soluble in ammonia, it is an iodide ion. If we add silver nitrate and dilute nitric acid, the nitric acid is there just to remove anything else that might confuse us with the colour. What colour is the precipitate that forms? A white precipitate is a chloride ion. A cream precipitate is a bromide ion and a yellow precipitate is a bromide ion. Now we're going to look at positive ions and the first thing we're going to do is a flame test. So does the solution change colour in a flame? Red is lithium, orange red is calcium, orange sodium, green, although I never think a person looks green, is barium, lilac, potassium, red strontium and a nice blue green is copper. Because so many of the flame tests are the same, we need to do some more tests. And even if it didn't change colour in flame test, we need to do another test. So does a precipitate form when sodium hydroxide is added? So iron 2 is going to form a green precipitate. Iron 3 is going to form a red precipitate. Copper is going to form a light blue precipitate. Aluminium, zinc and lead are all going to form white precipitates. We can differentiate the last three by adding excess sodium hydroxide. If it dissolves, it's aluminium. If there is no change, we can add excess ammonia. If it dissolves, it's a zinc ion. If it doesn't dissolve, we can add potassium iodide. And if it goes yellow, it is going to be lead. Let's try and apply that knowledge now with a few questions. What is the formula of a compound that will give a lilac flame, a white precipitate after addition of barium chloride, and this precipitate will give up a gas as the precipitate dissolves in hydrochloric acid? So a lilac flame is only ever going to be potassium. Barium chloride, that is going to give us either a sulfate ion, a sulfite ion, or a carbonate ion. However, the sulfate ion does not dissolve in hydrochloric acid and the sulfite ion does not give off a gas. So we are going to have potassium carbonate. Potassium is plus, carbonate is CO3, 2 minus. So the formula, which is what the question asked for, is going to be K2CO3. What is the formula of a compound that gives a red-brown precipitate after treatment with sodium hydroxide and a white precipitate after treatment with silver nitrate and dilute hydrochloric acid? So the first part, um, red-brown precipitate after treatment with sodium hydroxide is only going to be iron 3 plus, a white precipitate after treatment with silver nitrate and dilute hydrochloric acid is a chloride ion, so we are going to get iron 3 
chloride, iron 3 plus, chloride 3 minus, so it's going to be FeCl3.